Hi, welcome back to First Act. Today we'll be giving tips on where to start as an actor. My first bit of advice for anybody starting out will be to engage in some acting classes or local theatre groups. No matter how good of an actor you think you are, it's always good to keep the creative juices flowing. And also it's a great way to meet new people, new like-minded people uh, with the same end goal. So when you've attended classes and you feel like you're ready to take the next step, it's important that you go and get some headshots taken. And like most things, you get what you pay for. So running the risk of exposing myself here, I'm gonna show you some headshots that I have had taken from when I began acting to what my headshots look like now. So here you'll see my very first headshot. Now I actually got this for free when I was studying in college. Now, as you can see the shot is black and white. Now in the UK I wouldn't really advise that you use the black and white headshot as the main photo or as the main headshot that you'll be sending to casting directors. These type of black and white shots they're not very popular amongst casting directors. Also God knows what's going on with my facial expression here and my posture. It's all over the place. It's not the best photograph that could have been taken but like I say I was young and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So next I had these done. Now, these were not the best. These didn't cost me a lot of money. I had them done by a photographer who was just starting out with headshots. He's a very good photographer, but I made some bad choices and it didn't really work. So I made some bad choices and those bad choices made me look a bit more like a dodgy model than uh, an actor. Within those photos, there were some big no-nos. Now, if you look at this picture, for example, the lighting is terrible. What was I thinking there? Who did I think I was? And then there's this one with the hood. Like, it's terrible. It's absolutely dreadful. At the time, I thought they were great. I must have been on drugs. I wasn't, but maybe I was drunk. I don't know. But at this time, I was new to all this, I didn't know what would work, and I was just guessing as I went along. And then I decided to get these done. Um, I had been going to acting classes for quite some time, and I was recommended this photographer, and he'd been shooting some uh, well-known actors. So I went there, and straight away you could tell the difference, this guy was the real deal. I had these done, and I absolutely loved them, and I used them for many years, I got plenty of work out of it, which was great. Uh, plenty of auditions, and I really just wanted to show off this leather jacket to be honest, but it really, really worked. So these shots really helped. Then I knew my price range. I knew the type of money I was going to have to pay if I wanted the best shots. So when I had to then update my headshots again, I went and got these done. Now, the problem with these was not the photographer, the problem was me. Now on the day, I didn't really feel up to it. I don't know what it was, but I wasn't engaging with the camera very well. So the shots that I received that day, they were all very the same. There wasn't a lot of character. The facial expressions weren't very different. They were all just one tone. And it was important, you create as much character as you can. And I just didn't on the day. And I, there was something wrong with me. I don't know what it was, but I couldn't get to the bottom of it. So they weren't the best shots. Headshot wise, they were great. They, they, they fit the bill. They were exactly what uh, a headshot should look like. But in terms of me, I didn't bring it. And if you can't be engaging with the camera, then it's not gonna bode well when a casting director sees your headshot and thinks, hmm, no, if you can't engage with a headshot, how's he gonna engage when he's on camera with film or in an audition? So I still got auditions with these headshots, don't get me wrong, but I could have been getting more. So then I grew the beard and I wanted new headshots and I just went top of the range. Who can I go for? That is brilliant. And I was so happy to get these ones done. This photographer has worked with so many big names and I needed, I needed these headshots. When I got them done, I was over the moon. I used the three headshots that I got for different things. Uh, I use one for my audiobooks, I use another for my acting roles, and I use another for uh, commercial roles. I change them up where needed, but 
but as a rule that's how I use them and it works like that. So obviously you can only go with the headshots that you can afford. Now if you can't afford the best quality headshots around then possibly look at your local area, see what photographers are around and see what type of headshots they do. Uh, look for what types of style they do. Imagine you in those styles and decide what you think that would work for you. But when you do and when you book your headshots, I advise that you take a few outfits with you so you can change, maybe change your hairstyle a little bit as well throughout the shoot in order to create a great range of different characters that you could portray. Men, you could also change your facial hair or not. That's entirely up to you. Once the headshots have been taken, in a couple of days they'll be sent to you, unedited versions, where you can choose which ones you'd like to select to be finally touched up and sent over as your main headshots. Now usually this is between three and five images depending on the deal you have with the photographer. And there's usually an option to select extra images to purchase at a later date. So like I said before, you want to show range. So don't be choosing images that are all similar looking. Choose images that are very different from one another. Um, maybe the best image you can find in each different outfit change or a different variety of facial expression that's gonna show something different in that image. If you are having trouble choosing, I'd advise to maybe get a friend involved or another actor that you know to help choose your images because second pair of eyes is always uh, a massive help. So now you've got your headshots and you're putting into practice your trade in your acting classes and in your theatre groups, etc, etc. So the question then remains, how do you get acting work when you don't have an agent? And how do you get these headshots out to casting directors? Well, we're going to talk about that in part two. So if you follow this page, if you like and subscribe, then you can keep up to date with these tips. The next part is talking about how to get acting work without an agent. And there's many, many different ways in which you can gain acting work. Please, if you've got any questions about what we've talked about earlier, then please put them in the comments below and I will try and answer them for you as we go, maybe in the next video or in videos to come. So please put those questions in the, in the comments and I will get them answered. So please click subscribe and remember to make your first act of the day something meaningful.